sure if I'm going to need my glasses on, so I'm just going to take them off and put them back on and still have fun. Um, good morning um, and welcome. I hope everyone has uh, been filled with food and joy with being together with people. Um, I hope it wasn't too frustrating. I hope you have gone through most of your leftovers. I am thankful to be here. I'm thankful to be part of this community. Um, I'm thankful for COVID. Um, I'm thankful for my mom being here all the way from Florida. Yay. And um, nobody got sick, so we're good. Yes. Um, I know many. <laughs> okay. um, I know. Uh, I join many here with thanks for all of the hard work put into our growth through generation campaign. You guys did a great job. For those of you who weren't here last week, you'll note that the Giving Tree front and center here, where we ask you to place a leaf representing your commitment to pray for and support in whatever way you are able, time, dime, I knew I was going to mess that up, time, dime, and mind. This little church with a big heart continues to find ways to support our corner of Seville, and over the next few years, you will be able to see how much our efforts here have grown on the Watch Us Grow Ball. Believe it or not, with the Thanksgiving season quickly coming to a close, sadly you'll have to take notes. Next week, we make ready for Christmas with our hanging of the green service on the first Sunday of Advent. You may also remember that December 3rd is also the deadline for your senior angel gifts. December 3rd, there's still some things left. We have three. 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 That's amazing. Laurie, it says there's an option where we could just give you the money and you can take care of getting it done. Correct. I like that. Yes, you can. Is do that your preference, Laura? That is not my preference, but <laughs> we can get it done. Um, thankfully, I know someone who's insanely good at shopping. Um, so, yes, yeah, so if you have any of those questions, please ask me about that. And I still have to do mine, so I'll help Paul. Okay. Um, there are just a few orders left. Um, but also, December 3rd is the kickoff for our two small group studies. Alton is going to come up and give us the deets. And why not talk about your January as well? Alton, I'm going to take it to you. Thanks for the warning. <laughs> Good morning. So, next Sunday, we're going to start the, what was it, the We Who Say Me. It used to be Men Who Say Me, but now we're opening up to everyone. So it's very important this week, if you want to join us, send me your email because this Tuesday evening, I'll be sending out the email to our video. Yes, we have homework, but it's a very, very low bar. I think you'll enjoy the video. Watch the video during the week, come next Sunday, and we will have fellowship, prayer, and discussion. If you don't have time to watch the video, that's okay, come anyway. 
We're going to meet right back here in the top of your room next Sunday at 10 o'clock, 10, 10 a.m. 10 a.m. 10 a.m. That's what it says on the sign behind. Oh, it doesn't? <laughs> I want to repeat it over and over because there's certain people that are always late. <laughs> <laughs> we won't mention all really things. 945 for fall, right? That's right. So the other important thing that's coming up is our Financial Peace University. It's a wonderful class. We've had a number of people that have been through it. I really encourage you to do it. Even if you've been through it before, you can come through the class again. I like teaching it multiple times because it gets me back on track. And it's an amazing thing where if you can get control of your, of your finances, I love the saying from the class, think of what the people of God can do for the kingdom of God if you have control of your finances. So that will start January 9th. That's a Tuesday evening, 6.30 p.m. I was on the website yesterday. You can actually order that kit for $20 off for Black Friday, and I expect we'll run it through Cyber Monday. So it's a great opportunity if you plan to join to save $20. Yeah. 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 Oh, look, look here, there's a nice cross. Oh, and, and here's Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> and Nacho. Uh, and <laughs> but that's an invitation for all of you. Hi, I'm Nancy Parrish, and I'll be leading or uh, helping facilitate our uh, Sunday morning discussion group starting next weekend from 10 to 10.45, or 9.45 for those who try to get away a little later. Um, it's called Out of Time, and it's a beautiful Advent study and looking at how we relate to, to time and, and our relationship to time and God. It's a wonderful, wonderful study, and we welcome everybody. And Gregory, can you please report? Wait, there's more. <laughs> if you flip over your order of worship, you will see all of the other Advent offerings. December 9th is a busy day for Park Street, beginning with our Home for Holidays Market, and signs will be popping up soon. And then on that very same evening, DJ and friends will be holding an adults-only karaoke for kids fundraising event. That seems confusing. <laughs> I'm assuming that it is for adults and the funds go to kids. Is that correct? This is right. Okay. Context clues. And, <laughs> and if that wasn't enough fun, on December 17th, we will have a Sunday morning Christmas celebration featuring special music and a traditional pageant featuring our preschool child. This third Sunday service will be followed by our monthly extended fellowship. If that doesn't get you into the holiday spirit, and I don't know how that doesn't, Car Kari and our friends, the Synergy Twins, will be performing a Christmas concert right here on Wednesday, December 20th. And you can find out more about these events on Facebook, Instagram, as well as our webpage. With all of that, please join me in a collective time of silence as we settle our hearts and minds through the moment of silence. Please stand for our call to worship. In deep gratitude, we come to worship God. We recognize God as the source of all goodness. All good gifts come from the Spirit of God. Love, peace, joy, patience, kindness, and gentleness are all of God. We come with grateful hearts, not for things, but for who God is. We gather to show our gratitude in song and prayer. With God's spirit of generosity in our hearts, let us worship God. Would you pray with me? Loving and gracious God, your blessings are countless, and your love is never ending. As we celebrate this Thanksgiving, we pray that you will open our hearts to you and to one another, that we may share the gifts you have given us in loving service to all people. 
Lord, our God, you have done wondrous things among us. Guide us as we care for and protect the earth, our ivory home. Grant us joy of heart and make peace dwell with us. We pray in your holy name. Amen. Please remain. Our opening hymn this morning says, Let all things now and beyond be a good traditional Thanksgiving hymn. So I stumbled across one of my favorite writings of Rumi this past week. 
kind of a god wink in the most unexpected place, which that pleasantly caught me off guard, which is, I think, I think about most likely to happen, right, god winks, or when you're caught off guard. Uh, giving meaning to a day that just seems to be rolling and bland, bland uh, maybe busy, maybe angry, I don't know, sometimes happy, but they just, they occur all of the time, all of the place, if you are in the right state of mind to receive them or admit that they occur. With metaphoric eyes open, you will begin to see the eye of God's REM movement just about any place and any time. Yet at times, like in today's scripture, we need reminding that through our Hebrew Torah, God spoke, uh, spoke, spoke, or probably spokesmen for the most part, were tasked with a whole heck of a lot to say and do. Go tell those in your flock, your flock, so flock, to behave, change where they stay, avoid God's dismay. If not, go, then I'll show you the way. Let me see if I can do that with the rhyme again. Okay, so the overly flock or flock are told to behave. Change where they are stayed, and today we are hoping that we all feel less dismayed. If not, go then, these people would say. It sounds like it's like back to sleep, doesn't it? That's so what happens when you have cold going on in your head. If not, God promises to show the way. And today's, you're also going to hear how you should you should, you should pay. <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay. okay, so. All of these folks that we've heard about, these Israelites, and the, and the people that are you're sitting amongst today are, are told or are, are reminded they are in a covenant relationship with God. I mean, all of my Dr. Seussism, that's basically what you need to hear about them. Uh, I'm your God, and, and this is what I've done for you, right? You heard that in today's scripture. Uh, this is what I promise I'm going to do, and, and then this is what I require of you. Covenant relationship. It's, it's a two way street. Now, you've heard me speak of the still present voice and that in the Hebrew scholar Walter Brueggemann before. He, he was, is still very active in writing um, and was a great influence over my Old Testament professor or Hebrew scholar professor. Um, and then Walter Brueggemann himself stood on the shoulders of other giants like Buber and, and, and those who all tried to figure out this word of God thing. And I can say word of God thing, or you can say inspired word of God thing. The Old Testament, some people think you should shun and punt. But I have to say there's so many stories and lessons within it. It's people just like you and me that are going like this, God loves us and why does all this stuff happen? And, and if I'm being a good person, why did I get sick, right? These questions have an ending. They keep going on. From one end to the other, we've heard extremes of theology. Uh, and Brueggemann kind of talks about that when looking especially at today's text, uh, that God is a God of, of good, a, a good force, a, a concept rooted in Gnosticism, which I could go in and talk about that, but to give you a real quick one, too, about Gnosticism, it was the belief that um, our mind and our spirit connected to God are separate from our very out of control, wild and crazy body, right? And, and it's reflected in modern New Ageism in some ways. Uh, you find it all about all the holiness in ourselves. We're all good all the time, except when our wild hands get out of control. And then you also have the other then that involves an if-then kind of thing, the relationship saying, okay, you said that if I put the baking soda in the, in the flour and the egg and the water together and whip it out, I'm going to make a beautiful pancake, right? Well, I did it, then why did it stick? Not, not putting any kind of responsibility on the hand that's flipping the pancake, right? That you know, you burn it. So, Brueggemann and a lot of these other thinkers start arguing that these views are not completely complete. They're missing some things. Meaning, God is actually a personified agent. We hear about that, this person, this being, this entity. It didn't just say, hey, here's the batter, go make the cake. I don't care about it anymore, right? There's still an involvement in there. Meaning that God is God, and we are we, and we are together in relationship. But Brueggemann reminds us that we have to go a little bit further than that. It's just not a handout. 
that there are others involved. It's not just this, I have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior to hail with you over there and bomb those people. It has nothing to do with that. I mean, I do have a relationship with this God, and God has a relationship with me, and God says, and guess what else? You're going to have a relationship with that person over there. And guess what else? You're going to have a relationship with all of creation because you are a creature of all of my creation. So your responsibility isn't just between you and me and an if and then. All setting us up for a way as creature within creation to figure out how to figure this all out. God doesn't leave us alone. So we are told, bring your first fruits. So now I bring the first fruit of the ground that you, O oh Lord, you have given me, and you shall set it down before the Lord your God, and bow down before the Lord your God. Hey, welcome to Sunday morning. And then you together with the Levites and the aliens, yes, the Levites and the aliens, who reside among you, shall celebrate all of the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. Not not to just you. How do we figure out how to do all this? I mean, God created us all out of chaos. And, and God says, this is good. But it's going to take all of you guys to help me make sure it stays good. If you dismiss it, it's going to all fall and crumble. We, we can sit there and we can say all the stuff that's going on in this world is a sign of the end of times. But this stuff has been going on forever. We just get to see it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. On, and, and then Facebook helps out and Instagram. We can have all that stuff. I mean, what a great favor. This is how we're helping God by just sitting around being worried and saying, it's all going to hell in a handbasket. And, and why do we even bother? And, and even this attitude that you and I have, it's been going on for centuries. You know, your parents talk about your generation as much as you're talking about the next generation. And theirs before theirs, and so on, and so back, and so forth. It's not easy. And, and, and I can tell you right off the bat, I, I'm right there with you that this concept is easier preached than participated. But even Israelites like you and me, we need these reminders. Sundays are a good place. For that, but we kind of say, oh, I'm too tired, too sick. I don't like what she's talking about this week. I'm going to say, oh, blah. We all do it. I want to do it that time. I'm going to show up and hear what I have to say. <laughs> but what about when you're just out and about? Maybe it, it's not just Sunday mornings, folks. What about if we were just out and about, but we need these moral reminders, these supports, prescribed prompts in our circumstance? Well, for me, it's the God wounds. I, I talked about that earlier, I think, that I had one of those. And unexpected on Black Friday in a store. So I'm going to tell you a story because I know you love them. <clears throat> and here comes one about Big Lincoln. Way back in 1999, when Carrie was, I think, 13. <clears throat> Hi, Carrie. I'll check with Ruth. Ruth was at a Thanksgiving, she was 10, and, and I was about the same age as, as Carrie is today. And I started my beginnings of formal pastoring as a youth pastor at a church. And, and it was weird that I started noticing the God wounds. I could call them God wounds, call them whatever you want. In the most odd, peculiar places. And I could just say, oh, yeah, that's queen to be. <laughs> that's queen to be to me. And the craziest place I would happen would be in the aisles of retail markets. Uh, and not just any retail markets, but discounted retail markets. Um, you know, Big Lots, when Big Lots wasn't trying to be Kmart, a Kmart wannabe. God rest its consumer soul. Paul crossed himself to Kmart. Where are you going to get my Karen presents now? Anyway, I was a youth pastor on a covert mission to open the eyes of those who only winked interest was the cute guy or gal across the room, if not wink approval of their social peers, or, or just even wondering if God even existed, right? 
All of this I had to do on a two-string budget. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm thinking about what two-string budgets meant to me back then. I, I needed to somehow have this create a hands-on, experiential, unusual, and amusing way to capture these kids' attention. Um, so I'd go into these parents' eyes. These people probably wondered why I had incense to follow me. I had the color of life, just like noses, in the aisles of Big Lap. And I'd find things like random blue bottles or post-it notes. Oh, how clever. Um, glue on a piece of paper. Uh, even pipe cleaners could, I could, wow, they could be manipulated into activities and guided prayer. I rarely went into the place with an absolute. I always had a theme, come on, no surprise. I always had a theme. Uh, but the idea of how I was going to do this with these youth, it was going to require a deep dive in trust. Now this was way before, and this might mean nothing to most of you in this room, but it was way before the marketed like prayer walk in a box. I'm looking at Jenny, I know she works with youth, but she knows what I'm talking about. Group work camps, prayer walk in a can. And before any of those things, I couldn't even afford those on my budget though, so I had to come up and do it myself. So to do this, whether I knew it or not, I, I had to have a spirit of flexibility and grace for myself and openness so as to catch glimpses of God winks and spirit spirit led inklings all, all in big line. Who knew? I guess you might shrug this all off as an overblown and personal hindsight 2020 or glorifying rose colored glasses experience, but I, I promise you it's it's not. I knew and I could tell when the minds of these kids and the message I was sharing clicked. When enough thoughtful space and word and silence was gifted for those ages 13 to 18, all the way to the elder chaperone. Spiritual retreats had been and were expected when I showed up to this task of being a youth pastor. But I was going to be given about 10 hours a week to plan and execute growing up stuff. <laughs> and it was expected to be held annually. And quite frankly, in my upbringing, I rarely ever even went on them. I, I didn't really know what I was doing. People said your goal is to make them cry. I thought that was manipulation, <laughs> and I'm not going to use the word. But I didn't like that idea. So sure, getting kids away from their parents for a weekend seems like an easy sell. But I had competition. And under chaperone parties at well to do parents' homes in my community. That was always something to, to be. Like, do you really think you should let Susie go there? Because actually, as a child, I heard about parties like those. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there were sports scheduled. It was football season in the fall. And you couldn't miss the games. You couldn't even miss, miss the practices. And of course, oh, how much I love travel soccer. The tournaments. And if you don't go, you'll never get to play again for the rest of your life. And not to mention, the number one competition for the fall retreat was the uber-funded parachurch group that shall remain nameless that just so happened to market their events on the weekend as the greatest weekend of your life. It was literally 45 minutes away on the same weekend I was always trying to plan. They had great food. If you went to summer camp, they had parasailing, water skiing, because that's where God is all the time. Definitely not a big lot. They had great music. They had really hip, hip young adults that would lead them and said the grooviest things. And I was a 36-year-old first-time youth pastor. Groovy, I am not. But I finally found the best weekend to be the weekend before Thanksgiving. This is why all these memories are flowing in for me right now. I pack up a couple dozen or so youth and their chaperones, and we head to Goshen, Virginia. Do you know where Goshen is? Would you like me to tell? I'm going to tell you, Paul. Get on 64, so it's before you take the last exit, the back way to Lexington. But it's 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 wooded. It's 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 woodland, right? 
the, the really dangerous part is that hunting season was definitely going on at this time, and we had, don't go too far. We're in this orchard. We don't want to get killed. But anyway, we go to Goshen, and there was no cell phone service, no TVs. There was a whole lot of woods, as I mentioned. There was a low-budget small ropes course and a large dining hall with a social gathering at the end of it with a giant, giant stone fireplace. I know it's Donna. I know. She was one of my chapters. The cabins were heated by these small oil stoves and then smelled like they were heated by small oil stoves. Uh, there were no in individual bathrooms. There was a bathhouse and bathrooms. They were located outside of the cabins. It was far from luxury. It was far from best we can ever camp down the road. At all, at the time, and, and it still be, may be today, Grace Bible Camp, actually it's been renamed, it's been purchased by someone else. Grace Bible Camp had nothing on the non-denominations bells and whistles camp. Great entertainment and paper thin theology. I remember the first year, the initial response to go to Goshen was a lot of moaning when they got there. But by year two, Goshen was longed for by all of the agents. From Friday afternoon to Sunday midday, we'd be gone. I'd load up my van with all of my clearance and discounted items. I'd pack up a printer and computers to print off the schedules to be posted, especially for the prayer room. A room, the only room, that was set up at the top of these creaky stairs off of the dining area. Probably it was there for the summer camp cook, would be my guess. But it was transformed into a sacred space. Candles, finger labyrinths, note cards, Bibles, those Zen sand gardens, remember how popular those were? Oh, big luck, had loads of them on clearance. There were markers and paper and, and one prayer journal. There was a CD player, player. do you remember what those were? All right, there was a CD player, and I had a couple of those like massage therapy CDs that I put in there. Um, you know, you know that kind of stuff. There were sound machines and, and there's devotionals and random pieces of poetry. Whatever I grabbed in my nomadic aisle walks was there. Never knowing just how many youth or, or chaperones would go until the day we left, my first primary task was the prayer room schedule. Each person was required to spend 20 minutes alone, no matter what other activities were going on, including me, including the chaperone. They could make of it what they wanted to. They could take a nap if they wanted to. But one rule, however, is that they were not to leave their name in their prayer journal entries. There was one prayer journal. They could write what they wanted, but they didn't put their name down. Because other people could read their words, and we didn't want that to be a problem, right? I guess you could go, oh, well, that person was up there, but we didn't have ink tests to see who the last person was that wrote in them. And what I would always do is I would always choose the very last spot. I was the last person to be in the prayer room. And I would have a list of the names of everybody that went before me, and with the deepest sincerity, I considered each soul whose name was on that page. And I would read the prayer journal. And there were often celebrations, but there were often just heartbreak and struggle. And I have to say, as those kids and their chaperones, I, I could tell the people were feeling you too. They opened up for the field, the real field, as the kids as they say. The good. The bad, the ugly, the honest, the weepy, the belly laughs, the pranks, the inside jokes, and, and for the whole weekend, people just opened up and let it roll out. And we left with amazing memories. By the end of that first fall retreat, with all winks included, it was the event of the year for the youth at my church and their closest friends. My one to, ten, one to ten chaperone ratio quickly turned into a one to five because of all the adults that wanted to go along for a good dose of a wink and a prayer. This picture is of my second son, Zachary, and the youngest of three boys who over the years, despite their four-year age difference, became the greatest friends on one of those low ropes courses, Zach's catch and Ben. Each year they looked forward to the magic of Goshen. They never knew what to accept expect except a chance to be open to the possibility of a God wink or two, or 40, if not a great big God hug. 
I miss that time in my life. A lot of really, really good times. I know my kids do too. John and I, I know you miss these times as well. You see, retreats for adults aren't as popular as they should be these days. We're too busy for such things. And they cost a lot. And our comfort level and requirements are far too intense and specific. Not to mention our dietary requirements. Sleep on a cot? Are you kidding me? Eat less than diner-style food? No self-service? Are you kidding me? No, thank you, man. You can keep your pipe cleaner art. I can light a candle at home and sip on a glass of Malbec and be happy as a clam. No one's going to tell me what to do, let alone go sit in a dark room in the middle of nowhere reading some contrived spiritual mumbo-jumbo. No way. And the last thing I want to do is be open to feel the feels. Get real. Quite frankly, I prefer ignoring them as much as possible. Ah, yeah, those last things. But you'd be surprised about how just important it is to feel all those feelings. You'd be really surprised to open yourself up to all that you can feel at any time and in the most unexpected places. When you shut yourself off, when you close yourself up, trying to avoid any place or time that you're not in control of or that you might make you feel uncomfortable, you basically are saying you're unwilling to go to Goshen. Sadly, when Renee Brown, what Renee Brown said was true, when you numb one part of your life, you numb it all. Avoid all things challenging, all things uncomfortable. You miss the winks and the wonders as well. You have to take on, you have to examine, you have to release and find your way through the dark and the hard to equip and be open to the fullness of the amazing. Open to the spirit or inspiration of what it is you truly are hoping for, to experience it all. Not knowing what to expect except to be open to the God wings found in the unlikeliest times and places. From Goshen to Park Street to the Isles of Big Lots. You just never know what or who may wink at you. And you don't know whether or not you're somebody else's God wing. All this, all this remembering and wandering and wondering about me and whatnots made me almost forget to make my way back to that roomy writing. God wink at me in the aisle of Ollie's. Ollie's clearance now. It's my place. Found serendipitously, serendipitously on the opening page of Demi Moore's autobiography clearance item at the low, low price of two ninety nine. dollars <laughs> May I read the text <laughs> of Demi? <clears throat> From Rooney. The guest house. This being human is a guest house. Every morning a new arrival. A joy a depression, a meanness, some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain them all. Even if they are proud of sorrows who violently sweep your house, empty of its furniture, still treat each guest honorably. He may be clearing you out for some new delight. The dark thought, shame, Alice, meet them at the door, laughing and invite them in. Be grateful for whatever comes, because each has been sent as a guide, as a wing from beyond. Amen.
Christian <laughs> and captured the flag and all those fun times. One time, <laughs> one time we didn't get to go to Goshen. I'm sorry. Go ahead. We're letting this run on. Hey, come on. I don't run on. So I'm a walkie talkie run on. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so Donna really, when even if she had moved to a different church, but she also worked with the youth group. She started bringing that youth group to join us, and it was all the things. One time we didn't get to go to Goshen, and, and it was it was so magical. It was challenging, and um, I remember the movie or the documentary Super Psycho. Oh. You remember? Okay, so I mean, I cut out like his chat with his girlfriend about you know what they did at night, but I would show segments of that. So I had all the kids come, and I said, "Bring all your favorite junk food." Food. They had no idea what they were going to do. Bring all your favorite junk food. You know, every share their favorite. So man, it was cookies. Everything just piled up in the. Okay, eat up, eat up, get us all right. And then the next morning, we started, I interspersed Bible studies with Morgan, whatever his name is. Um, sorry, Morgan, I forget your name. These snippets of basically what McDonald's, sorry, McDonald's, but he ate that for 30 days, right? It was 30 yeah. days straight. I don't know if you remember this. And, and by the end of it, he had to eat it for every meal. He had fatty liver issues, like, and it, like, and his, his, they said, your liver is about... The same health as someone who's been binge drinking. It was so bad. So in the morning, I said, okay, no more junk food. No caffeine, no sugar. I mean, all this stuff was healthy, healthy, healthy. And on the very last day, there was a fire trail, and I had Donna and this other chaperone. I've gotten, you'll love this, Bobby, PVC pipe, and they made a cross out of it. It was hollow, and they filled it with rocks and put caps on the end, and each group, at, for like 10 minutes at a time, had to carry this cross on their shoulders up this fire and not say a thing. And they were angry at me. Man, I, I got to say that. I got to say that. Uh, but it wasn't even that. It was like strong enough to know that the lesson was worth it. And we got up to this beautiful over. And what they didn't know is we had carried all this food. And we had communion up there. We had a meal on this overlook. And it was just like fantastic. It's all, hang in there, guys. <laughs> it's worth it. That's all I'm saying. Thanks. <laughs> We're going to sing for the fruit of all creation, for all the things we are so thankful for, for the carrying of rocks that feel like, you know, I mean, honestly, we may be sitting here right now thinking, I am carrying a buttload of rocks, you know? But at some point, we get to put that down and enjoy a fabulous meal with our friends and with the and not friends so actually we're going to have a fabulous meal in God's presence right here with all of our friends in just a few minutes so lay down in your bags of rocks for the fruit of all creation thanks be to God for the gifts
would you pray with me? Holy One, you who created the heavens and earth, the snails and gazelles, the dandelion and the grapes, inchworms and kittens and heirloom tomatoes, and kites and ocean waves and all the hues of the color blue, you are grateful. Grateful that we have any sense of your mysterious presence. Grateful that you give us life and ask simply that we live abundantly and fully into your calling to be your love in this world. Even so, we know that instead of loving recklessly and wastefully, we live hedging our bets and on the safe side. But we care, oh God, we do care. And so we pray for those who suffer, for those who are sick, for those who are lost, for your dear earth, to ask for help, for your dear innocents, who are targets of random violence, war, and neglect. Help us remember that we are your beloved children, and that we live in your beloved world, and that we are alive and can experience life. Bless the gifts we now bring from your table to ours and back again, so as to bring you healing and life to the corners and streets and spaces in which we live and move and have our being. We pray in the name of our Savior, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory.
spend so many tables over the days, haven't we? So much activity. Um, I hope that you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving. You can hear in my, you can't hear all the voices in my head, but you can hear all of this that's left over from what I thought was allergies. And I was, man, I, I have to say for my great load of thanks is that I didn't have COVID, that no one got sick, so who knows what's going on, maybe it was just me. But you, just the help of people that gather at my house on Thanksgiving, um, the people that brought a bunch of sides, and my sister Leslie, who I keep saying thank you so much to, who spent the night and just helped me set tables for the 24 plus folks that rolled in. And um, you, you don't think about it, like I could sit there and I could go, this stinks, because I don't feel great. And blah, 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 but still, it's like the gifts come, the godliness just come in. Uh, the people, my son in from Baltimore, who just happens to be, I don't even know what his title is anymore, who could just take apart a propane heater and make it work again. Or those kinds of things. You just, you just let them pass us by. The fact that your car started this morning. You know, we just forget all the things to be grateful for. I mean, we got tons of stuff, I'm sure. I can tell the whole list of the things Paul did wrong over the past few days. But honestly, like the guy raked his leaves with a smile on his face and and people sh showed up and were grateful and I'm grateful. I got to see my granddaughter celebrate her first birthday. I mean, there are all those things in the midst of not feeling the best. And I could have chosen to just cancel everything and lay down in bed and pull a cover over my head. It, that's a metaphor, right? For how a lot of us feel every day. But we are reminded at this table, not just our Thanksgiving table, but this is the ultimate Thanksgiving table, where we um, we bring our sides. Let's hope we leave our baggage at home. Um, we bring our sides. We bring the best we can bring to this place, and we're given the best we could ever receive. Let's not forget that. Thanksgiving is never over. So on that night, can you imagine? Jesus had a whole lot to not be thankful for. He looks around the table. It wasn't what he planned. The guest list was altered. Uh, the guy on the right, the guy at the left, maybe wasn't going to show up the next day. But still, took bread and blessed it anyway. And guess what? Took a grateful heart. Gracious and merciful God, you are slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. You are good to all, and your compassion extends over all creation. Because of what you have done for us in Christ Jesus, we have the assurance of your goodness and confidence in your love. Because of Christ's body, broken in sacrificial love, we see that your love will endure forever, that you are faithful. Help us to break and to share this bread in faithful response, holding fast to your promise. Let your compassion work through us, that our lives of service may be seen as living and acceptable sacrifices. We pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. So in the same way, he lifted the cup, we gave thanks, and from the vine, the river of life has flown, has flown to us all. We're reminded it doesn't stop here. It takes us. And we walk away and we share it with others. With all those who are here. In these moments of silent communion, external God, we pray that the noise and clamor of our daily lives may be still that the insistent demands placed upon us by our hectic schedules may be silenced, that our ears, our hearts, and our spirits may be receptive to you. In listening and waiting silence, we prepare our hearts, trusting that you are here, that you are active in our midst, that you make the ultimate difference in life. We wait upon you to bless this cup, to enrich our lives by helping us to remember Jesus' dying sacrifice, 
to be aware of Christ's living presence, to have the hope that the future is Christ and that Christ is in our future. We pray in the name of the Son of Righteousness that shall rise with healing and with grace. Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. So please come now. As your relatives. And, and take time. We're a little bit smaller than usual this week. There's no need to rush. And think about the gifts and where you want to put the receptacles, I'll find them. Does anybody have them? Oh, yeah. He knows where they are. <laughs> Ching! <laughs> Welcome home to a home that is imperfect, but perfectly suited for each one of us. <laughs> As my lovely and darling pastor's wife brings out the receptacles like Vanna White. <laughs> we will prepare our hearts and as light as I make this moment let your hearts be as light and filled with grace forgiveness for the leaders of this church <laughs> giving thanks for the leaders of this church as we give thanks and have grace for each one of you God bless
We begin this worship event with thanksgiving. I call on you now to move out into the world with thanksgiving. Oh, oh give thanks to our God, who is so good, whose love stands for us forever. Let thanksgiving enhance the joy you experience. Let thanksgiving transcend the pain you may suffer. Let thanksgiving sweeten the duties you must perform. Let thanksgiving underpin even the griefs you may have to endure. Oh, give thanks, thanks to our God, who is so good, whose love stands firm forever. The love of the Redeemer. The love of the Creator. The fellowship of the Counselor. All will be with you now and always. Therefore, with joy, let us share God's peace and thanksgiving with our neighbors. Amen. Amen. 